Right, today we're going to be looking at converting from a non-linear equation to a linear form. And we'll look at why we'd want to do this, and then we'll look at how to do it. So sometimes in the real life we want to try and make, or we're trying to find an equation that relates two things. And as an example, you might do an experiment where you take some values, for instance, this example here, where you swing a pendulum and you discover the length of the pendulum and how long it takes for the pendulum to go between two points. And you model the results and you'd like to see if it forms some kind of equation. So if you table the values and then you plot these values against the Cartesian plane, we notice that these don't form a straight line. So this is not a linear equation. So what we would have to do is we'd have to know what kind of an equation this might uh, look like and using that we could try to discover what this equation might be. So what we're going to do or what we'd have to know is we'd have to know what kind of an equation this could be compared to. And for instance, say in this example we are told that t is equal to some constant a times the square root of l. Perhaps this is the equation that describes the relationship. Okay, So this is a directly proportional relationship. So if you remember from IGCSE, if we have y is directly proportional to k times x, it means that it's proportional by some constant. And in this relationship, t is directly proportional to some constant times the square root of l. And what we want to try and discover is perhaps the value of a. So we want to discover the how it is proportional. Right? But first of all, we need to see and we need to prove that this is even a valid equation to use. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a table for t and the square root of t. And what we want to do is we want to see if the relationship does indeed form some kind of linear function, okay? Because then we could represent the t equal to a squared l as some straight line equation, and we could solve for a. So t is quite easy. We'll just put in the original values for t. So they were 0 0.45, 0 0.63, 0 0.65, 0 0.90, 1.0, and 1.1. And L is just, we'll take the original values for L, and we'll take the square root of those values, okay? And what we end up with is 2 2.24, 3.16, 3.87, 4.47, 5.0, and 5.48. Okay, so they might not look interesting at all, but the important thing is when we represent them on a straight line or on the Cartesian plane and we join the coordinates, we'll notice that they form a straight line. And so we can say that this equation of t equal to a times the square root of l can indeed be represented by a straight line equation. And how it happens is we'll say that t is our y, but usually we say big Y, is equal to, and what we're going to do is we'll call a is going to be m. This square root of l is what will be represented as big X. And while it's not here, there is a plus C, but this plus C in this equation just happens to be zero, okay? So it passes through the origin. So with that in mind, seeing as we have some basis of a straight line equation, what we can do is if we calculated the gradient of this straight line, we would then be able to calculate M, and M is also equivalent to what A is equal to. So the best thing to do is to actually take the outermost values um, in case the straight line is not perfectly accurate. So we'd get the best average for the gradient. Okay. So we can say the gradient is equal to change in y over change in x. So we can just take the coordinates of two of the points on either side. So we'll take this point 
in this point, right? Just because if there is any discrepancies in the middle, we're taking an average along all the points. All right, T represents the Y coordinate and square root of L represents the X coordinate. So we're going to write this as 5.48 and 1.1 as coordinate 2. And coordinate 1 we can say is 2.24 and 0 0.45. And we'll just calculate the gradient of this line from that. So it's change in y over change in x. So 1.1 minus 0 0.45 all over 5.48, take away 2.24. And this is going to give us a gradient of about 0 0.2. Okay, so approximately 0 0.2. So since the gradient of this line represents the equivalent from our straight line of A, we could say, therefore, that this equation could be modeled as T equals 0 0.2 times the square root of L. So that is the equation that could have originally been the um, relationship between the time that it took for the pendulum to sling to swing based on its length, okay? And this is what we discovered by having an idea, right? The important thing is we must have some idea of what the equation could be modeled after, and then we need to prove that it is modeled after that by seeing if we can plot it as a straight line, and from there we can calculate the other values. All right, so what we need to look now is how we can convert normal equations into an equation that becomes linear. So y equal to ax plus b over x is definitely not a straight line equation, but we can write it in the form that it would represent a straight line equation. And there are many methods and many ways we can do this. So let's have a look at the first method. All right, so let's have a look at one method that we could do this. So if we take this equation y equal to ax plus b over x, okay, a and b are just constants that we want to find, and we want to change this into some form of y equal to mx plus c. So what we could do is we could get rid of this x on the denominator here, and we could multiply the whole equation by x, and what we would get is xy equal to ax squared plus b, right? And from here, we can change this into an equation that could represent a linear equation, right? And how we would do this is we would say, well, we want y equal to m times x plus c, right? And so xy could represent our y, a could represent our m, x squared would represent big X, and b would represent c. Okay. Now it's very important to note that when we write this as an equation of y equal to m x plus c, y and x can only contain the original y and x from the original equation. And these constants a and b, right, they may not be inside the y and the x part, right? And in the same sense, these a and b's, they can also only be contained within m and c, right? So we can't have an x or a, an, a y contained within our m or our c value. Okay, another way we could write this, right, another method that we could have used is if we return to the original equation, instead of multiplying everything by x, what we could have done is we could have divided by x, okay? So if we divided by x, we would have got y over x equal to a plus b times 1 over x squared. And again, we would have our equivalent or our comparison to what we want to make a straight line equation plus c. So 
y over x would represent our new y and a would represent our c b would still represent our m and this time we would have 1 over x squared representing our x okay so we'd have to take the original equation we'd have to substitute values into this new equation to find the gradient and the y-intercept and then we could find these constants a and b which we're going to look at in a later topic right but for now we just need to look at converting these into appropriate linear equations and we need to remember just as a, again that these y and x right they cannot contain anything to do with a or b and likewise m and c cannot contain anything to do with x or y okay let's look at another example here we want to convert this into a linear form so this is a exponential function that we want to see if we can convert into some kind of linear form so we'll start off by writing this as y equal to a e to the power of minus b times x this is just an exponential equation and we're trying to convert it into some kind of linear equation so we have base e and we have x stuck as an exponent so the natural well ironically the natural thing the normal thing to do would take the natural log on both sides so let's take the natural log of y and we'll take the natural log of a times e to the power of minus bx right so using our log laws we're going to split this up because that's a product so we'll have the natural log of y on one side the natural log of a this is going to be plus the natural log of e to the power of minus b times x and we know that this is just one and we can bring the exponent down to the front using the power rule so we're going to get the natural log of y equal to i'm going to bring this part here just in front so we'll bring minus b x and then plus the natural log of a so if we wanted to convert this into y equal to m x plus c here is our y so the natural log of y becomes our new y okay so we would have to plot and create a table of values to prove that this the original function could be created as a straight line b would be m x would remain x and c would be the natural log of a